And for more on the case, we're joined by Jean Casares, who has been covering this trial as a correspondent for In Session on True TV. And good morning to you, good Jean. Morning. Thanks for being with us. So I want to begin with this video that the prosecution shows of Hughley crying. What was the reaction inside the courtroom to It was that? like a domino effect. I mean, you've got George Hughley crying on the tape. And remember, this is hours after her body was found. Uh, he voluntarily went to the police department, waived his Miranda rights, just sort of talking. So George Hughley, the defendant, starts crying in court as George Hughley on the tape is crying. And then Yardley Love's mother and sister begin to cry. Mm -hmm. The defendant's family begins to cry. And at least two jurors were crying. So the fact that two jurors were crying is an interesting point here as well, because obviously it's going to come down to them and how they perceive the situation. Mm -hmm. Do you think this helped George Hughley in any way? I think it makes him human. You know, I've sat in that courtroom, and I have not seen any emotion out of him. He will not look at crime scene photos. Remember, this was his girlfriend. Now, mm -hmm. prosecutors say he beat her to death with premeditated murder or felony murder, but it was his girlfriend, too. When the crime scene photos go on the screen, he looks away, mm. and yesterday broke down sobbing. So might this be something that could backfire then on the prosecution? Possibly, but, but George Hughley, with everything he said that came out yesterday, the jury is going to look at the evidence. Is George Hughley telling the truth on the tape? Because, remember, there's a very critical email the prosecution brought in from the Friday before the mm -hmm. Sunday that she died, where George is upset she's dating somebody else and says, I should have killed you. But the end of that email chain, George says, look, can't we talk tonight? When he went into police station, he said, I just wanted to talk with her. But yet her bruises were so bad, and she had a black eye. She didn't give that to herself. But George Hughley says, you know, I tried to calm her down. She was just so upset that I was there, and she started banging her own head against the wall. So what does that mean? Do the injuries show that she did it to herself? I don't know. It's going to come down to the medical science. You think that's what it'll come down it's to? Critical. It's the, critical. The defense has made the point now in their opening remarks, not that he's not guilty, not that he's innocent, but they've tried to make the case for this being involuntary manslaughter. That was amazing because normally they say, and at the end of this trial, we ask you to find the defendant not guilty. Not here. They're saying manslaughter. So they will allow him to have some responsibility. But they say he didn't premeditate this. He didn't deliberate this. This is not first degree murder and it's not felony murder. It's manslaughter. That's up to 10 years in Virginia. Mm -hmm. He served two. That would allow him to start over again and have a life. A very different outcome than what one might expect. Gene Casares, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being with thank us. We you. really appreciate it.